And the, the children answered this way, um, she's the only one that knows where the scotch tape is at. <laughs> Another answered, mostly to clean the house. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, how did God, how did God make mothers? One little boy said he used a little bit of dirt and just like the rest of us, <laughs> uh, God used his superpowers and a lot of stirring. How did God make mothers? God made my mom the same way he made me, but he used bigger parts. <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> uh, what, what ingredients are moms made of? God made mothers out of the clouds, angel hair, everything nice in the world, and a little dab of mean. <laughs> and finally, why did God give you your mother and not some other mother? We're related, one little boy said. A little girl said this, God knew that she would like me a lot more than the other mothers would like me. <laughs> um, it, it's a little bit of an emotional day for many of us in the room, and I can walk with you on that. Um, I, I'd like to first address, you know, I, I'm not going to hammer any moms today with impossible expectations. That's not what God would do. Um, you say, you know, you're saying, I'd like to be an ideal mom, but I'm trying to raise up kids and I'm working and, and doing the best I can. Th this message is to encourage you this morning. Uh, the, the second thought might be, I'm a woman without children. Mother's Day is hard for me. It's awkward. I don't fit. There are women's groups. And, and so I, I just want to tell you, relax. Have the peace of God today. Be encouraged. There are women in the Bible that made impact. They didn't have any children, but they, they, they had people that they mentored. They had the children next door. You have nieces and nephews, and you're an aunt or the students. And God will bless you, and God will help you. This message isn't just for moms today. It's for teachers. It's for coaches. It's for aunts. It's for grandparents. It's, it's for the, our families. Men, men of God in this room, this isn't a day that you daydream right now. Okay, everybody? I want you to check in with me. Moms teach the next generation are so influential about doing what they have to do to instill God in our lives and drawing us closer. So there was a mother in the Bible, and her name is Jochebed. And uh, it's a common name for moms, isn't it? Jochebed, amen. She had to make some hard choices about the welfare of her son. Her son's pretty famous. His name's Moses. You've heard of him, right? But the ch tough choices that we have to make, um, I believe, as a mother or a father, they're not for the faint of heart. You understand that today? There, there are some decisions that are going to require just heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching things that we sometimes have to decide for our children. And that's why you need faith. That's why you need the faith of God to help you do the things that God's touch can be on you as you make a decision for God today. The, the Bible mentions Jochebed not too many times, but it mentions Moses a whole bunch. And it just shows that she was a mother of a nation because it all began with Moses and his obedience to bring his people out of Egypt today. And so she's mentioned a few times. It's mentioned in Exodus chapter 2 on the screen, verse 1. And it really doesn't mention her name, but we know her name. That was Jochebed, according to Numbers. And her husband's name was Amron. And so here we go with Exodus chapter 1 on the screen. Are you there with me? Uh, verse 1. And about this time, a man and a woman, a a Amron and Jochebed, from the tribe of Levi, got married. And the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And she saw that the son was a special baby. Other translations said he was a beautiful son. Um, but we'll take both today. And she kept him hidden for three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. And she put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. Are y'all following along? Yes. And the baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen uh, to him. And soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river and her attendants walked along the riverbank. Continues. When the princess saw that the basket was among the reeds, she sent the maid to go get her, get it for her. And the princess opened it up and she saw it was a baby. And the little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby sister approached and approached the princess and said, should I go find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked, yes, do. The princess replied, so 
the girl went and called the baby's mother, her own mom, Jochebed. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess said. And I will pay him. I will pay you for the help. I will pay you for the help. And, and so the woman took the baby home and nursed. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of water. Father, I pray that you bless the word that I would get out of the way and that people would listen. Lord, let even stubborn hearts open their hearts today in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Let's get right to it. Right, everybody. Yeah, because Israel was a threat to the reigning Pharaoh, that king of that day, the Bible speaks of that there was this forced slavery that came on the people of God. And the more that they got oppressed, the more that they multiplied. That's the hand of God during pressure times. There is times that God will even surpass what man's understanding is. Listen to me, everybody. I'm so glad that my Bible isn't always neat. My Bible tells stories of hardship, conflict. But in the middle of that hardship and conflict, God is still with me. This is such a time as that. We live in a present time right now where it couldn't be harder on even people that are living in America for Jesus, let alone on third world countries. But today, God is still with us. Because God is that sort of God today, right, everybody? And, and so the Bible says that they grew and prospered as a people. And um, because of that, Pharaoh said, you know what? I want all the babies, the newborn babies, to be thrown in the Nile River. There were, there were, according to the prince of Egypt, there was crocs. There was also, not those crocs you were either, those crocodiles. And, and, and so Jochebed became pregnant right at that moment. And so there couldn't have been a worse time for somebody to expect a baby than that present moment. Also, others were paid on the payroll. Watch out for anybody that looks pregnant. She had to hide the pregnancy. Or anybody that has a newborn baby that's not obeying um, and will turn them in today. Can you imagine living in such fear as a mother, as a father, uh, seeing your child that way? There, there are modern day moms, I believe, that have circumstances that are trying or challenging times right now. Mothers in parts of Africa, you've seen the documentaries or maybe you know firsthand, they have small sons that are taken away and they're recruited into like a rebel army and they're forced to fight and train as soldiers, even as children. There are mothers right now and parents at our south borders waiting to come in. And this isn't political because everything in the media turns political. But these are souls. These are human beings. These are people with life, the people that cry and bleed just like you and I that are waiting with sons and daughters to try to enter in our borders or to stay behind or whatever. But those people count because Jesus died for them also. Right, everybody? I'm not a, we're not talking politics today. We're talking about God meeting the world and God meeting people during hard times. You, you might say, well, you know what? America's pretty blessed, but you know how people drown our children today? They drown them with social media. They drown them with the things that are put on, the violence and the bullying. They, they pour out the stuff on media that's just uh, promiscuity happens, and there's a sea of confusion of right or wrong, what's right, what's wrong, because bi people are now Bible illiterate. They don't know right or wrong. They don't know full truth today. And every diligent parent knows how important it is to raise children right now with a God in their lives today. It's dangerous to grow up in a world today. Do you recognize that today? And so this is the world that Jochebed found herself in during the times of the pharaohs, and she wanted to save her son. She knew somehow of the faithfulness of God, even during a point of slavery, that God would be with her. And I want to dedicate this message today to every mom, every parent, every person that's in this room today, that you find yourself in a hopeless situation and you need faith today. I want you to be alert right now to the opportunity that God's presenting before you because of his word is true and it will not become void when it returns void. It will return full today because it's going to accomplish what we meant it to accomplish today. In Exodus chapter 2 on the screen, first thought today as it rolls out today. When she saw, when she saw the baby's first point today, and when she saw... <laughs> How the baby was special. She kept him hidden for three months. Somebody say three months. three months. And she could no longer hide him. She got a basket of papyri reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. In other words, you use your faith 
with what, what, whatever God's given you, use it. And she had tar and pitch, and she made a basket, and that's what she had. It continued. And she put the baby in the basket and the lid among the reeds on the Nile River, and she let that baby go. And sometimes you got to learn to let go, Mom. Even as an adult. He's an adult now. He's 40 years old. Let him go. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? More than you know. Yeah, and the baby sister stood at a distance. This is Miriam. She stood at a distance and watched him to see what would happen. Jochebed, number one, had somebody say courageous, courageous. faith today. She had bold faith today. And I, I'm not sure how she hid that long, the baby, for three months. And, you know, babies make noise, baby cries, baby gets colic, right? We, Rebecca had colic so bad that. We lived in a like a, an apartment. We did live in an apartment when she was born. And uh, our neighbor upstairs moved away because Rebecca cried so much at night. Yeah, she, she emptied out that apartment by herself in the name of Jesus. Yeah, made too much noise there. For, for weeks, month, weeks, she tried to hide and save Moses' life. In the midst of the difficulty, um, she looks at Moses as she's holding him and said, This baby's beautiful. There's something special about them. And I think every mom and every parent that's held their child realizes how special and how unique every child is. You know it, they say when it's in the womb, that you know it when it's here, that you say, you know, there's something just special about this baby, or he's going to like spicy food. Or I, <laughs> a child knows that day one when you dress your child to leave the hospital room, you have some discernment, and moms have that gift on their lives of discerning things about their child, about the future, about even circumstances um, that are happening in our world that no man has. And thank God for the discernment that women have. It's a gift that God's built in. Because of that, mamas in this room, would you discern, would you continue studying your child? Would you begin to look at him a little bit differently? What is it that God has put into my child? Of course, he's special. There's nobody like him. He'd make that Gerber's baby food label, wouldn't he? He's that beautiful today, and but every child is beautiful. Every child has a gift today. It says that she made that basket that was with tar and pitch, and she made it waterproofed, and um, she used what she had, and she sent it down. When she sent it down the Nile River, I can imagine she had to have a prayer, like, God, take care of my son in that basket. Miriam was following along, of course, and making sure because it's, probably a little bit less likely to notice a child playing among the, the Nile River than it would be a mom following that basket. She didn't want to get caught. She knew exactly where to send it. But here's the thing. In rivers, there's, there, there's waves, there's currents that take things. But as she sent it, just like Noah had an ark and God knew where to arrive him and take him to the port that he had to do, God was steering that little ark that Noah was in. So you want God to be the captain of your ship today. Do you understand that? You want God to direct your path. Amen. Somebody told me Jesus take the wheel. Amen. <laughs> One time. But God is the captain of our boat today. And there is hope in that today. All that we can hope for is Miriam walking along the banks of the Nile River. And she notices that her little baby brother's in there. But she can't do anything if a crocodile approaches all she can do is walk along. Do you know sometimes all it takes is your presence? You maybe not say the wrong thing or put your foot in your mouth, but just be there. And that might be enough for somebody. Somebody lost somebody um, that was very important, and they're not around the table anymore. The pillow's empty. But you just being there, family, for them shows them how much you love. Your presence is enough. We say the wrong thing. Don't say, I know what you're going through, because you don't. Only they do. You may have been in the same circumstance, but everybody is unique in their loss and their pain. Amen. But just be there for people. That's the greatest pastoral advice I can ever give anybody. You don't have to say much. You can hug people. You can love people. You can embrace them and say, I'm here for you. Amen. You may think it's not enough. No, it's more than enough. Let God do the rest. Right, everybody? The New Testament speaks of Moses' parents. They make it all the way to the hall of, fa hall of faith. Amen. 
And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, on the screen in your handout, let's read it together. You haven't had any fun all day. You haven't been able to talk back. Come on, living faith. On three, read it with me. Right. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Yeah. And, and so they made it into the big board right there where everybody can come and watch them and say, these, this, this is what they had to do today. And it was courageous faith. I think of a mom maybe that cannot conceive and she spent money on clinics and uh, she's done. Th- but maybe their last resort is to adopt a child and they adopt the child in the name of Jesus and they keep that child out of the foster care system. Maybe it's a woman today that's married to an unbelieving husband and they have to defy that husband um, to serve God because they fear God more than that husband and love God. It's quiet in this Baptist church. Maybe it's a teenager that they have to say no to and every other mom on the block is saying yes to, but they're saying no because it's God that they want in their home, not the world in their home. Do you understand that today? So God is with us, and it's a courageous act that we fear God more than we try to please man in this room today, and they trust God. Yeah, Pharaoh speaks of the second thought here. The second thought is this, where it says that uh, soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and when the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she hid, she, she sent her maid, That'd be great to have a boss, you know, to have, you know, somebody to, you could boss around, right? Everybody, especially mom, today is your day. You can boss everybody around, right? Uh, she sent her maid to go get her. And when the princess opened it, she saw the baby and the little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children. Then the baby sister, Miriam, approached the princess. Should I go and find the Hebrew woman to nurse him, the baby for you? She asked, yes, do. And the princess replied, And so the girl went and called the baby's mother. Somebody say this, Jochebed had practical faith. Some of you ain't helping me, and I swear I will go down there, and I will bring you up here. You saw me look at you right now. I gave you the look. Now now I'm going to be nice today, amen? Yeah, I had breakfast. Give me a good amen. Yeah, thank God for it. Thank you, Mom. Gave me breakfast today, all right? Yeah, Jochebed had level-headed faith, and she placed her son in the river by faith today. It wasn't something that she did care to. She's like, well, there you go. I'll see you on it. I hope you make it. And there's croc, you know, everybody. She, she knew exactly where the palace was and where the princess would bathe. She knew where to send it. She knew, Miriam, I want you to watch your little brother as he goes down. How many have been that big sister that has to watch your little brother's? Yeah, you told me about that. Amen. <laughs> yeah, you were right in the middle of them. Amen. Yeah, and, and that th- there was a deliverer on board that was going to go down to the river. Josh, uh, Jochebed had clear, practical thinking. And this is what we talk about right now, that you, just, you, you, you don't need to do stuff haphazardly as a child of God. You can think it through. God gave you a brain, right, everybody? God gave us wisdom from past experience, like if I... Do that again. It's not going to go right. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to have God help me today. And that's what Jochebed did. She had practical faith that God infused and God blessed us today. There's a future that God's designed for everyone in this room, youngest to the oldest. And if we're still breathing, God has a plan for us right now in this room, right? But you have to speak up. You have to do something because when you move, God moves. And, And so Miriam moved, the little sister moved. Jochebed moved. Even that lady, Pharaoh's daughter, moved. God used her, an enemy. God used her for righteousness today. And so thank God for it today. We have that. James speaks of the time to act, the time to move, and that there's wisdom. In James chapter 2, verse 25, the same with Rahab. She was in the line of Jesus. She was the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus. And she was a harlot. That's what they call her in the Bible. Some of y'all use other language, amen? And wasn't her action in hiding God's spies and helping them escape a seamless unity in believing and doing what God, who, what counted for what, with God? In that very moment, you separate the body from the spirit, 
you end up with, yeah, weekend at Bernie's, right? <laughs> Tying him on the back of the boat, you know, he's not alive anymore. S same thing. Separate faith and works, and you have the same thing. Would, yeah. And that's why faith is needed in this room, but that's why you work it also. You're not saved by works. You're saved by the grace of God. But faith brings maturity. Faith brings you the next level where you work it. You, you, you get saved today to work good things for people and good deeds for other people. Amen. The light of God shines through you. It's Jesus. Give me a good amen. amen. Moms are very practical. There's this funny story about a daughter's wedding. And the mom went to go light the candle at the altar and she realized, she didn't realize it was a potential fire hazard. And she got too close with her acrylic long nail that she just did for the wedding. And that nail caught on fire. And so she doesn't want to ruin the big day for her daughter at the altar. At the, and, and so she lights with the nail. She lights the other candle with a nail. And then like a, a gun, she blows it out and puts it. <laughs> and the talk of her black and nail was the talk of the reception. Yeah. Faith, faith mom and grandma come to the rescue, right, everybody? It requires enormous faith and foresight and fierce love as you love your children. And so you find a way, mom, uh, to keep your child maybe at home. You bring over that godly aunt or you take them to a godly grandma to watch. Or you stagger your schedules so he's working at night, you're working. And things like that are great sacrifices that many of you moms had to do because you had foresight and you had practical faith. And I want to honor you for doing that and raising good children and blessed children. And they're beautiful because of the sacrifices that you made years ago. Look what you have now or you're making right now. In Exodus chapter 2, here's the blessing that a person receives of faith today like Jacobed received and you can receive it also. In Exodus chapter 2, the message Bible says this, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter told her, Take this baby and nurse him, and I'll pay you. It pays to serve the Lord. And the woman took the child and nursed him. And as the, after the child was weaned, she presented him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her son. And she named him Moses, and the one that's called, I pulled him out of the water. Moses was going to pull his people out of Egypt, and she prophesied his name a woman that didn't even know the faith of God. God will use outsiders sometimes to help us on the road that we need to be on and improve our destiny. There's no stopping God's hand on your life today. The third principle that I have, Jacobit's courageous or practical faith. Somebody say it was rewarded. Yeah. Mo Moses is a little big sister. You know, she finds the bay, or she runs right up at that right moment and she presents them and Jacobed's able to nurse um, baby Moses until he gets she, he's weaned off. But you know what that mama did while she nursed him, while she spent time with him? She taught him about the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. She taught him about Israelites and she taught him about how God is a God of creation and God loves people and God wants to set people free. And this isn't our destiny for us to be slaves. She whispered in his ear the things of faith because she had Moses during his times of moments of that were so uh, pivotal in his learning process. The sad thing is she had to let him go back into Pharaoh's court. The Bible teaches that. But that's when Moses learned the art of war, the hieroglyphics, mathematics, all the greatness of Egypt was poured into him that time, during that time, um, because he would come back and lead three, three million people out of Egypt. And that would take wisdom to do. That would take higher learning to do than just being a slave child. Do you understand that today? So God combines all this to, to build a man of faith, to build a man like there was no other today. She could have done it on her own, but Moses' mother needs help. You need help. Can I pause right now for the Holy Spirit? Mom, you can't do it without a church. Mom, you can't do it without God in your life. You can't do it without a small group. Why are you going on and getting depressed every six months or having an episode every few months when God could be in your life and you could have a support system built in called the local church? 
because the local church is the hope of the world today. Amen. Don't do life. That includes every man in this room today. Amen. You ultimately have to leave it in God's hands. But as you do, you have prayer warriors all around you believing God. Thank God for it. Everybody say amen on that one, right? In Hebrews chapter 11, our final scripture, verse 24, it says this. It was by faith that Moses grew up and refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people. Instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin, he thought it would be better to suffer for Christ's sake in his own treasures uh, of Egypt. For he was looking ahead for a great reward. And it was by faith Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger and keeping right on going because his eyes were on the one that was invisible. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we, we have to learn sometimes to let go of things in our lives. Moms, let go of that small child to make a couple of mistakes. He'll learn, right? You're still alive and you're here. Amen. <laughs> let go of that teenager to learn the hard way. Let go of your adult son and daughter. If God's called them to do something a thousand miles away, as much as it's going to hurt you today, have some courage, have some faith, have some practical faith, because God will still be with them today. God works behind the scenes to accomplish great things, as he always does. He is the God that sees. Yeah. There's some interesting things about this story as I unpack it and finish it up. Jochebed, Jochebed saw that Moses was beautiful. Pharaoh saw a basket. She saw a crying baby. Moses' sister was seen, saw that that basket was floating, but she kept watching. God saw the people in Egypt in slavery and bondage. God sees your situation. And he meets it not with judgment. He meets it with compassion, love, and mercy today, as he did the people of the Old Testament. God's always just wanted a relationship with you. And you've arrived at this very moment that if you'll just move a little bit and open your heart, God will move in your life. Jochebed had to trust God and it saved her son. Miriam had to speak up. And maybe you have to speak up in a certain issue. You don't have to be all mean about it, but you can speak the truth in love. And it reunited her family. She said, hey, I know a lady <laughs> that can come nurse that baby right now. Do you want me to go get her? And she was set up for a. Uh, a holy moment there. Pharaoh's daughter showed compassion to a baby that was crying. And she saved a nation. Each of these women, they had something that God assigned them to do. And they met their point of destiny. How about you? Jochebed. Miriam. Pharaoh's daughter. Where's your hope today in God meeting you? And God appointing your destiny today? Your time today? Make a bold move in what God's told you to do and be decisive in it and go forward in the things of God. If God provided in the past of this impossible situation, God will provide for you. God will show up. I'm confident of it today. If you put God first, God is never late. God is never early, but God is right on time. Right, everybody? Yeah. Your ultimate purpose, as it was with Jochebed, it's to foster a love for Jesus, to foster a love for God Almighty into your children. When well, they're far away from God, I guarantee you your, pray, your prayers are, are going to be effective. I guarantee you your prayers are going to be answered. And all, all prayers by moms, they get it. God just does something special with a prayer. So see the deepest need right now that your child has, which is salvation. If they haven't come to Jesus... And intercede for that. Pray fast and believe God. Amen. God, God will move upon that child today. The Bible says this, not on the screen, but in my heart. That the Lord is my helper. Whom shall I be afraid? God will provide for me. That every mom may say this today. You can do brave things. You can do bold things because God is on your side. God just doesn't leave you. Amen. God's right there with you. Um, among the Nile River. Amen. God is in that boat with you today. Amen. God's partnering with you. God's hooking up with you. God is making a way. Give me a good amen. Yeah. So living faith. Amen. Make your home. Make your community. Make our church a place that people see courageous, practical faith. So the reward is great upon us today. In the name of Jesus. Do you receive God's word? Amen and amen.
And so in the name of Jesus, we'll obey God's word. Would you pray with me just for a moment as we pray? Heavenly Father, I pray that your word would do what it's meant to do. Holy Spirit, um, fill in the, the moments, God, that we, um, we needed you. Do a work within your church. Stir hearts. And the confidence of God is arising in our ladies and the people of God in this room today. You're stirring their hearts. Thank you for your servant, Jacobed, Lord. Thank you. It's real. There was hardship there. But I thank you for a woman of faith, Lord. Thank you that I'm encouraged today. Now at this moment, there might be some rejoicing. I know that there's grieving, there's pain. But God, you're at work. If you need an extra measure of faith right now, or practical faith, that's probably where we're at, where you need to move so God can move. And he's spoken to you today. Would you just lift your hand as a child of God, as a woman of faith, as a man of God? Just lift your hand a little bit. God, God meet meet the needs where there's a promise, God, that you'll never leave us or forsake us, God. There's provision, and you're more than enough for that situation. Thank you, Lord. You're touching people on the screen right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As I continue to pray, Jochebed became eternal because she received the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if you want to do something eternal, if you want to live beyond the tombstone, the grave marker, the funeral, if you want to live beyond that, you must become eternal. And the only way that you live forever, right, and in the goodness of God's land and his promised land called heaven, is to receive Christ as your Savior today. Jesus paid for all your sins, all your wrong. You might say, I've been good enough. I've come to church today. But you know what? When you leave this room, something's going to happen. If you're going to make a mistake, you're not going to be perfect. No one is. No mother, as good as she is, no grandmother. That's why you need the perfect man most perfect holy man that ever lived, Jesus, to fill that void. All your good works are not good enough to get you into heaven. You need Jesus to save you from your sins. Moses was saved out of a basket. It's a type of Christ right there in the ark. Get into Christ. Get into the right boat today. Ask Jesus to save you from your sins. In this moment right now, I won't embarrass you. This is a tender moment for you. But I will ask that your hand is slightly raised and you, no one needs to look around, but I need to know to pray. And you'll, you'll make an altar right there at your chair. You'll pray this prayer of faith with me and I'll introduce you to Jesus who's your Savior today. If that's you, would you lift your hand slightly and say, that's me. Please don't look around. Pray. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Lift your hand. Somebody else. Yes, sir. Yes. God bless you, mom. Yes. God bless you, sir. Thank you for your hand by faith. About four or five hands. You're not alone. living faith, you don't pray alone. You pray this prayer with me. Let's pray this prayer out loud by faith. If you prayed it, um, if you lifted your hand, pray it loud enough that you hear it in your own ear. We pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. I trust you right now, Lord. I will follow you and you will be my Lord. Guide me in life. Help me to do your will in the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate new life with living faith. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that angels are partying in heaven, so they did that a little bit better than you, but that's okay. Um, there's a great book called the new the, the new book uh, the new believers handbook and it's going to be found at our welcome table if you would especially if you lifted your hand go get get that from Jill Tuttle she's one of our great leaders and she'll introduce you to that book and she'll connect you 
uh, in other ways, the Growing in Faith class, faith class happens at 9 a.m. every Sunday. Diane Ruiz will tell you about that today. In the name of the Lord, right, everybody? Praise God. Amen. Let, let's um, receive our tithe and offering. There'll be a wonderful worship song that will go on the screen in a moment. But let, let's um, just thank God for the generosity of God's people today. This morning, I'll join you in giving. Um, I'll do a text by give because that's the easiest one. And uh, usually, honestly, we try to do this on Wednesday, on Thursday. And you know what? It's, it just didn't get done. But I'm doing it right now with you. There are several ways to give. They're on the screen that I'm going to follow the prompts. And so there they are. So I'm doing the text to give. How are you giving this morning? Thank God for it. And so they're living faith. And it's going to come back and prompt me. And you can do the same right now. So let's do that together in the name of Jesus. Is this okay if I give with you today? Yeah, not ahead of time. There we go. thank you for the blessing of God that adds no sorrow upon my finances and upon the people of God and their finances. Lord, I thank you for their generosity. I thank you, Lord, you've separated the tenth and made it holy and given it unto, and gave it unto you. Now, now, God, bless the ninety. And I pray, God, that, uh, that if somebody still hasn't begun to tithe, um, they're not forced to, uh, but we give over and above that because the law now is broken. We do New Testament, and now we're generous. And that means we give more than the tenth in the name of Jesus, and our finances are blessed, and they accomplish what they're supposed to do in Jesus' name. Amen. All of God's people say amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's stand together, and there, there'll be a song of faith, I believe, on the screen. Thank you. God bless you. Happy Mother's